Welcome back, Alexander here, a blockchain developer and full stack and today I'm gonna explain you about the IOTA Trinity wallet hack. The IOTA attack happened with MoonPay. Uh, MoonPay is an exchange that allows some kind of atomic swaps between multiple kind of cryptocurrencies. So in November and December, IOTA integrated MoonPay. Uh, why did they integrate the MoonPay? Because it enables of uh, the users to use the MoonPay API without KYC and without registration to do transactions um, buying and selling crypto, especially IOTA. Uh, so MoonPay uh, was integrated by the IOTA developers because they had a public API uh, and the IOTA developers were very excited about this integration because you know it, it gives uh, a new feature uh, utility to the IOTA wallet and to the IOTA cryptocurrency. The MoonPay they have an API, it was built in JavaScript um, also, the IOTA Trinity wallet is built in JavaScript as well. So the IOTA developers started to implement uh, and integrate the MoonPay uh, JavaScript bundle into the IOTA uh, wallet. Initially, after the, the implementation and after the f initial test, uh, some of the IOTA developers, uh, they raised a concern, uh, namely the MoonPay API uh, had a bundle of JavaScript, so they integrated that JavaScript that was actually accessing a JavaScript file from the cloud, from the internet. So they said, you know, can you actually compile the file and put in a package so we can integrate from the package. Uh, so the MoonPay after a few days, after a few weeks actually, uh, they compiled and made an NPM package, a uh, node package. Uh, they uh, so the IOTA developers they downloaded over there, but they did not realize that the package was actually also accessing the same file from the cloud, an internet file. So the, the package was almost inexistent. It was just the same file that was download that was downloaded from the internet. So the IOTA developers, somebody actually um, solved the problem and uh, did some kind of concern asking MoonPay if they actually can build the entire package in the package but they forgot about the issue so they released the, the, they released the, the update everybody got excited and nobody care and you know it was not something that critical at the moment uh, thinking that you know they will be able to solve it as soon as possible so the integration was in November December um, and the second problem uh, was that the IOTA wallet which is a very critical software for the cryptocurrency itself had an auto update so after the after the update was released and um, you know no people were complaining for a few weeks um, you know the IOTA wallet was actually checking if there is any wallet is if there is any update on the internet and uh, some people was uh, some people were actually downloading the update automatically and in many cases you you should not really update the wallet that often because it could have different kind of exploits and usually those kind of wallet attacks happen a few after a few weeks even after like one two months but not after years because you know it doesn't make any sense for an attacker to wait a few months how the attacker actually did so the wallet after it got updated it was actually accessing a file from the internet so the attacker uh, was able to change the file so when it when you started the app it was downloading the attacker file um, the the iota developers uh, started to investigate uh, when they realized in this course some of the developers some of the people started to complain that their money had been gone IOTA developers started to investigate because you know if there is one complaint could be one person who you know got the malware in the computer and somebody else uh, stole his uh, his funds but after that they received another complaint and after another complaint so it's, it's, they started to become uh, suspicious that maybe the wallet was hacked in some way so they started to investigate if there is any kind of issue uh, they didn't couldn't they couldn't find it very fast because you know the update was a few months before uh, so they after a few days they 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 understood that attack could actually come from MoonPay. So when they realized that the wallet was attacked, they stopped the coordinator so no transaction were, gone, were happening. Uh, why the attacker had been waiting so much time? Uh, it's simple. After you attack a wallet, you do a harvesting process, meaning you are waiting for more and more people to steal their private keys. Because if you just steal off one person, uh, you know, and after that you, you wait for another day to steal for the second person, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, you, you need to steal for a lot of people, and after that, you, and then you act in order to steal their funds. So this is the harvesting process, and it can take a few weeks. It can take a few even a few months uh, in order to you know get some substantial money uh, that makes sense for you uh, so 
after the harvesting process, the, the attacker actually made transactions, you know, um, moving people's money into his own account. The IOTA developer stopped the coordinator so no more transaction could happen on the, on the network. Uh, and they started to investigate, they found the MoonPay integration. This is the reason why the IOTA developers started to believe it could be an inside job for MoonPay. Um, usually in th those kind of attacks you don't really call the cops because you know the cops they don't really know about how cryptocurrency works and how you know especially how IOTA cryptocurrency works and so on. So this is one of the suspicions why many people uh, believe that uh, MoonPay uh, could in MoonPay employees or MoonPay previous ex-employees could have uh, been attacking and how the attack happened uh, they, they believe through Cloudflare so somebody had access to the MoonPay CDN Cloudflare uh, in order to uh, change the, the, the file, the bundle um, it could be uh, it could be many reasons. It could be uh, social engineering. Somebody was able to access uh, some employee uh, Cloudflare account. Uh, it could be uh, you know it could be also an attack on the MoonPay server uh, that you know the bundle had been changed to some people, not to everybody, in order to avoid suspicious. The attacker could have access to the servers from MoonPay in order to change the bundle, uh, inserting that malicious code that was collecting, harvesting the seeds. Uh, what are seeds? Uh, so wallets, they usually have a private key. From this private key, you have a public key and you, you access your funds, transferring money with a private key and in order to check how, how much money you have, your balance, you use the public key, right? So seeds are usually used for two reasons. First is for having a brain wallet, uh, meaning you have like 12 words, 24 words, a mnemonic kind of uh, password. So you can write the 24 words on a paper and it's easier to memorize that, you know, 80, 120 different hexadecimal uh, numbers or something like that. And the second is that um, uh, seeds are usually used for creating HD wallets, meaning sequential, um, sequential wallets. You use the seed and then using the HD wallet you can create sequential private keys. Uh, with one seed you can create an uh, enormous amount of private keys. You can create different kind of wallets after that. Uh, you just click one button and you have another, another private key. You click another button and you have another private key. And if you move your seed from one device to another one, you will be able to access all of those wallets, all of those private keys using only one seed. So this is the reason why seeds are used in wallets uh, because they allow sequential generation. How IOTA you stop the coordinator? Uh, it's quite simple. IOTA uses a DAG uh, in order to allow people to create transactions, but finally, in order to have a consensus and to avoid double spending, they use some kind of a ledger. Uh, so, you know, some kind of a ledger like a blockchain itself. So the coordinator is actually deciding which transactions are confirmed in order to avoid this kind of double spending. This is a different kind of story. The coordinator itself can do double spending, but it's, you know, it's managed by Diota developers, so it doesn't make any sense for them to make double spending uh, attacks and something like that. Like that. So when they, they found out it's definitely an attack, somebody hacked the wallet, which is the critical software, the most critical software in, in a cryptocurrency itself, um, then you know um, they stopped the coordinator so no more transaction could happen. What are the next steps? Good question, right? So the next steps will be they were gonna make some kind of KYC tool. Um, so they were gonna revert, cancel those transactions uh, that uh, could have happened in the last uh, few weeks or something like that that could be linked to the attacker itself. So there will be some kind of KYC uh, in order to identify uh, who is the attacker and who is the real person. So uh, probably the, the IOTA are going to introduce like a web page where people are going to have to upload some kind of proofs, either some kind of previous transactions or an acknowledge from somebody else that they really had access to this private key and they were the real owners of this private key and not the attacker or some kind of documents like a passport or something like that that are going to be very hard for the attacker to forge uh, because if the attacker will be able to forge all those kind of rules there is no kind of sense to do the KYC and this kind of um, tool. Um, in order to avoid those kind of attacks in the future for different kind of cryptocurrencies uh, the best way to move money to do transactions is by using cold storage. 
Namely, you have your private key, you have your seed on a device that is never connected to the internet. Uh, especially if you have big, big accounts, big uh, funds or something like that, you use a, uh, you use a computer uh, that is never connected to the internet, you don't really do that much updates, especially to the wallet itself, uh, and you do the transaction offline. Meaning, meaning you have the private key with the, so with the wallet software on the machine that is never connected to the internet, um, you, you open the wallet, you do the transaction itself, you have to, for, uh, for some cryptocurrencies, you have to introduce some kind of uh, special kind of data um, to, do, to complete the transaction because the computer is not connected to the internet. So it doesn't know uh, your inputs, you know, different kind of settings for the cryptocurrency itself. And after that, it does the transaction, you copy the transaction, either by, you know, writing from the computer that it is not connected to the internet to the one that is connected to the internet. You can use a USB flash, but then you start to open more security issues. Uh, but some way, you're gonna copy the the, the transaction itself uh, from that cold storage device that is never connected to the internet to the to the computer to the internet they're gonna propagate the, the transaction to the internet so by this way your security uh, is really improved and uh, you you're not gonna be exposed to those kind of attacks in the future but you know it's not that easy if it was that easy everybody was using cold storage but it's not that easy another another option could be um, a ledger but I don't really recommend the best option is to use cold storage but not all cryptocurrencies allow cold storage I'm not sure if I would allow cold storage especially because it needs a lot of data and a lot of uh, stuff that needs to be downloaded from the internet so I'm not so sure if you can actually cache that kind of data for a couple of minutes uh, to move the data f to your uh, offline device to do the transaction and after that you get a transaction from the offline device and you propagate on a second device. I'm not so sure if you can do cold storage but might be something that IOTA developers can take into account uh, in order to improve for the next generation and uh, you know for uh, could be a nice feature for users. If you find it very interesting smash that subscribe button and um, hopefully your funds are safe. Uh, one, you just need to update the software and uh, be sure, um, you know, uh, you change the, the seed, you move your funds to, from that seed to another one. Uh, and as I said, best way to protect yourself is by using cold storage. Thank you so much and smash the subscribe button.